Okay, I just got back from another pickup. Right there it is behind me. It is uh, Boland's 38 inch cut. Uh, long tractor, MTD Boland's. Right there, let's take a look at it. So, I just showed you the ad. It ran last year. And it's either the starter is stuck on the flywheel or maybe the solenoid's just out. I don't know what else it'd be. Just listen to this. I got my booster pack on it. You hear it whining. But turn pretty easy so I'm gonna take this cover off and uh, see if the what the starter looks like okay so both tires look exactly the same this one and this one so what I'm fixing to show you is I got that rapid ra ratchet strap on and it's in the middle. I'm trying to close up the gaps. If everything goes smooth, it's going to fill up there. So let's see. All right, let's see. There you go. Okay, so I did a ratchet strap. And then I let the bottom of the tire hit, you know, the ground just to um, put pressure there. You just got to push back and forth on that tire to fill in all the big air compressor helps, which I don't have a big one, but I got evidently big enough. So the more you do this, it, it bundles out on the sides and makes a better seal right there. There it goes. Now you, get, you gotta stop right there. Let that off. All right, so I got it in the shop. You know, I mainly had to air the tires up to roll it. You know, um, you don't want to try to push that around with two flat tires. Look, starter off. So I really think it's a starter because I put the electric lead. I don't know if I did it on video, probably not. But I put the, a hot electric lead on this and grounded the other, and it did not spin. So I'm running a bench test on this starter. I did it on the mower, but I don't know what kind of connections I had. Positive, negative. And over here. I got the positive on the positive and the negative here. And I'm hitting it at a spark, but it's, let's see. Can I show you that? I don't know what to show. Well, anyway, it's sparking over here and it sparked over there a little bit, but it's not moving. Okay, guys, it is two days later. Um, you know, two days ago, I determined that that starter was bad. Look over my shoulder, I got a new starter. It's two days later, or is it three? Anyways, maybe three days later. But I got the starter right here. Gonna put it on. Now, this is the first chance I had to get out in the shop. I would have normally came out here anyway this afternoon, regardless if the starter came in or not, and clean the carburetor, check out the fuel system a little bit better because it's been sitting for a year. So I didn't get to do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the starter on, put the battery on, hope I've been having it on charge. And we'll just see what it does, but I'll probably end up having to take that carburetor off. So we'll see. Slowing it down for a second. There's a wire right here behind this this wire and got to make sure not to crimp it behind that so that's why I'm taking me so long 
And then this darn thing doesn't line up. I mean, the gear's in the way of this. So you can't get your socket right on it. You have to come in on sideways. Okay, so the starter's done. Now I'm keeping this one just so to keep the gear, haul ring, all this is, goes on a lot of different starters if I need it. <clears throat> but anyway, so the key to this is it's metal and it's 14 teeth. Now some of them are plastic and some of them are 16 teeth and I guess there's a lot of different kinds, but for Briggs, that's the two that I always run into is 14 and 16. So count your teeth, make sure it's metal or plastic and replace it with the light kind and you're good to go. So there it is, tie it on there, six, uh, 14 tooth. Everything's tight. This battery supposedly is one year old. I ain't looked at the date code on it. Uh, so I'm gonna put that on there, see if it'll turn over. Another tip. I'm gonna put this thing in neutral. I'm gonna open up my doors. I've had them catch on fire <laughs> because I'm gonna spray carb cleaner in it just to jump it off. I got gas in it. Like I say, I have not checked the carburetor and that's probably what's gonna be next. But I just wanna see it turn over and fire with carb cleaner if nothing else. Then it, when I do, then I'll know I can move forward and get that going. Hey, by the way, those two tires, they hadn't lost any air. And that's been, what, three days? Man, that right there, you saw me put them on there. So, that's good. Okay, so I pushed it out on the back porch because I've seen these things catch on fire. I got my carb cleaner. I'm gonna spray it right here. Now, all I'm hoping for is just for it to turn over and hit fire one time. But if it ran, I'd be surprised. Let's see. All right, let me get this. Going. Hey, I'm very surprised it did that. So there you have it. I didn't even turn the, um, I didn't clean the carburetor, didn't even touch it. Now I did drain some gas out of the fuel. Um, remember this, when you get a bore that's been sitting around for a year, water sits at the bottom and gas floats on top. So like, I always have to assume there's a little bit of water in each gas. Of course, the gas line's at the bottom of the tank. So I typically always take the line off and just drain it, the bottom half of the gas out, at least do that. And then if there is any water, you're gonna drain it out. So I'm gonna, hey, I'm gonna put this cover back on and see what it'll do. Okay, so you saw it run there for probably, what, a minute, but it did shut off and so now my next thing I'm gonna do, of course the gas, you see it's, you know, I put gas in it. Gas line right here, it's got this little cut off on it and I got it off, I did that. But I'm fixing to take this off the carburetor, put it in, in the bucket and just see what the fuel flow is. Because if it's not flowing, then it's not gonna run. And if it is flowing, uh, get some more water out of that gas if it's in there, then hey, we'll just clean the carburetor. Uh, not a big deal. All right, so let's see if we got gas flowing. I got this off. Already loosened it up. Let's see, it's coming out nasty looking, but it's coming. So there was a little nasty in the bottom of that tank. So I'm gonna run it for a minute. Can you see it? Yeah, you can see that a little bit. But the first part was milky, so that was, I just, I probably just filled up the carburetor with milk. Let's see. All right, so I'm gonna shut shut this back off. You know, you could um, you could just probably empty that bowl out and be good to go. 
But since it's right here in front of me and the easy access, I'm gonna take the carburetor off and just do it right. Every time I take a carburetor off, I'll always take a picture of this just so I'll know exactly how it is configured. Um, just because I can't ever remember. I can figure it out, but I got a picture. Um, so I'm gonna take it off. I'll put it on time lapse. It won't take me a second. Okay, so I'm at the workbench, got the carburetor off. Now look, I went ahead and made a special half inch wrench and I painted it red so I could identify it quickly for this right here. That, I had to grind this down on this side and this side because a regular wrench won't fit inside this gap right there. Um, so I put it on the grinder, ground, so it's thinner, I don't know if you can tell. But anyway, it'll fit in there. So that's what I'm doing. So this isn't really a how-to video, so what I'm gonna do right now, just put it on time-lapse and you can just watch me. So yeah, man, this thing's in bad shape. So can you see, man, there it is. See all that? That's terrible. That's, so I'm going to put my air compressor on and I'm going to blow, I'll do it off camera. I'm not going to take my camera over there. I'm going to blow air through all these holes and I'm going to clean that up. I'm going to get some um, old sandpaper stuff and get in there and clean that out. Uh, blow it all out with the air compressor. Then I'll follow up with carb cleaner. Hey, I got an ultrasonic cleaner and um, but I only use, only use that when I have to because it just takes so much time. That gasket's, it's not real good shape, but I'm, I'm going to try to reuse it. So let me turn my air compressor on and blow that out and I'll be back. Okay, so it was so dirty, I felt like, and I don't get to play with this um, ultrasonic cleaner real often. Air compressor kicked on, of course. But I'm going to take this uh, screw out right here but it's set at a certain location so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten it up and see how many turns it is so it's it's one full turn that's one and a half turns so I'm going to take it all the way out and I know it's one and a half turns back off from, from where it needs to be at now, I'm, I'm letting this soak in gasoline right now, too, so I'll show you that. And this is just the way I do it. I just, I get a bucket of gasoline and clean all the stuff in just to get all the debris off, really. I figure it's better than water. Um, this gasoline's, you know, it's just easy to work with. There's about a buck fifty right there on gas. Now, I got an SOS pad. It's not an SO. I got a something like an SOS pad I clean that out with and I can't find it. Welcome to my shop where you can't find stuff. Anyway, okay, this is what I was talking about. Steel wool, is that what that is? I think my wife had it in the kitchen. But I just stick it in there, twist it, and that gets all in the corners and I ought to get that pretty clean. Especially when it's that dirty, you know. Need better light in here. All right, that's what I'm doing. So I'm letting that. <clears throat> so I'm. So that looks better already. That wool. And I got that one screw out. So I'm gonna let it sit in there just because I got it. I've only used it a few times. So I'm doing half simple green, half water. So I'll stick it in there. Okay, so let's um, set on the max time. Yeah, 480 is it. Turn the heat on. Let 
let that thing process for a while. I'm not going to get no big hurry. I'm just going to let it run through the cycle a few times and then we'll get it out and see what it looks like. Um, there we go. All right. So something else, while I'm waiting on that to clean, this, um, what's it called? A, uh, oh, the plunger fuel solenoid. That's what it's called. That thing right there has got to operate freely. And it is. But while I got it out, I'm going to take this off real quick. What I'm going to do is just clean it up a little bit. So I'm going to shoot. carb cleaner in it and just uh, work it make sure it's good and free and it was I think it was working but anyway it's working now if it wasn't so sometimes it'll go down and get stuck but this is coming back and forth good so I think we're good All right, got back together, put that last screw in I took out, and I got it all the way tight. So what am I going to do? I'm going to back it off a turn and a half. So it's one turn and a half. That's where it was before. Now, my only concern is, is that the uh, rubber ring that goes around this bowl, I just hope it don't leak. If it does, I'll just have to get another. But we'll see what happens. Okay, so I got it cleaned, got it put back on. Now, a time of truth for me, a lot of times, is when you turn this gas on, that it don't leak here, and the bowl's working. So here it goes. So I got it on. I'm gonna give it about three, four minutes, see what happens. All right, so it did not leak on me. So if you got a wood shop like I do, Push it out here so the thing don't catch on fire. I'm not even going to use uh, starting fluid. We'll just see what happens. But I will choke it. Okay, so the next thing is I'm going to put the top back on. It's a little tricky because this heat shield on the other side right here if you get it all in there just wrong it'll shear these blades off i've done that before it's dirty but anyway i'm gonna put it on and see what happens So there it is. It is a Bolins. I don't know what year it is. Mid 90s, I would guess. Early 2000s, maybe. Bolins lawn tractor, it says. Um, let's look at it real close. Bolins lawn tractor, here it is. Six 
speed, shift on the go, long tractor. So the best I can tell, that's the deck height. That turns the PTO on. You know, forward and reverse right here. And that's the speed control right there. You know, choke over there. 38 inch cut. Obviously it came from Lowe's. Um, battery was purchased last year. So what I do to it, all I did is put a starter on, $35. Um, clean the carburetor, aired up the front tires, which, you know, that was three, four days ago and they're still holding as tight as they were. Which they're not in great shape, but hey, I'll, I'll take it. Um, mowed grass, so, so this isn't the typical lawnmower that I'd keep. It's not a garden tractor. I mean, it runs good, but what I'll do is, um, it's getting late in the day now, but probably, this is Thursday, probably Saturday, I'll play mow the grass with it. I'm gonna try to raise that deck up a little bit higher, um, adjust it up, but I'm gonna mow with it Saturday. And hey, if it um, mows like it should, the whole yard, you know, I'll probably end up selling it. Uh, but anyway, um, I don't have a whole lot in it, but it was, that's that's the things I do to get one running. Hey, then this is typical. Carburetor, you need to learn to uh, clean a carburetor. If you don't know how to do it, you might as well know how to do it if you're gonna deal with small engines because 90% of the time the carburetor needs cleaned. Uh, it's all fuel system. So, um, and the starter, you know, that wasn't a big deal. That's just bolt on, bolt off. Um, so anyway, make a comment about it subscribe to my channel i'm always buying lawnmowers garden tractors that don't start don't run you know if they're in real bad shape i don't buy them but you know that's obviously in pretty good shape you know the seat's good everything about's good so i'll mow with it till i'm confident that it's a good mower then you know i'll probably sell it all right see you